Well, here's a question. How do superbugs become antibiotic resistant? Scientists puzzling over this now have some answers. A study by NUS and Imperial College London says bacteria can share genetic material through virus parasites. Now, to explain this all, we have Assistant Professor John Chen with us. He is from the Infectious Diseases Translational Research Program. I hope I got that right. Department of Microbiology and Immunology at the <laughs> NUS. Not done yet. Yong Lulin School of Medicine. Welcome, uh, Dr. Chen. Well, First of all, um, it's being hailed as groundbreaking uh, discovery. Uh -huh. Why? Why? Um, well, it, it's, it's basically one of the mechanisms that has been kind of uh, hidden for a long time, and it explains a lot of what we've been seeing with kind of the rise of superbugs and uh, kind of how bacteria have evolved very quickly and very rapidly uh, to basically keep pace with all the new antibiotics and, and the modernization and the discovery of new drugs that we've been throwing at them over the last decades. They're keeping pace, uh, outpacing in fact, because and they are resistant. That's correct, yes. They've been outpacing us. Very simple single cell organisms have been outsmarting us. All right. Uh Asking an even more basic question now, uh, mutation is a way in which all, not just uh, superbugs, but for example, I was thinking of, of animals, uh, for example, bird flu. So generally, mm -hmm. if a chicken flock gets bird flu, all die. Yes. But some might have a mutation that makes them immune, to, or rather, less likely yes. to die from birth. Yes. It applies to superbugs as well. So this is something that has been understood for a very long time. Yes. What has your study uncovered that we did not know before about mutations being the way different species are able to survive or thrive when others cannot? Okay, so I, I think to, to explain this, it's, it's better that I kind of explain the different ways that genes are transferred. So there's what's called vertical transmission or vertical inheritance. And that's essentially what we do as humans. We reproduce and we pass down our genes vertically to our offsprings. And so any genes that we have, good or bad, are given to our, our children. And microbes also do the same thing. So that's nothing special. Uh, there's something called horizontal gene transfer is what my lab studies. And this is a very different uh, process. This is a very different mechanism. Essentially, only microbes can do this. So animals and humans cannot do this. And what happens is, let's just say we, we are all, the three of us are bacteria. You can give your genes to me, mm -hmm. I can give my genes to you, and you can use them in real time. And so without for, our needing to reproduce. Without with needing each other. to reproduce. And this happens within minutes. So your eye color can be transferred to me, your height, your, your physical characteristics, your abilities yeah. can be transferred to me, and I can transfer mine to you, and we can use them immediately. And so as it turns out, the major uh, drivers, the major uh, uh, mechanisms that, that do this are uh, mediated by what are called bacteriophages. So bacteriophages are viruses that infect bacteria. Mm. And they are generally considered one of the, the most prolific and most abundant parasites on the planet. And so when they infect bacteria, um, bacteriophages essentially look like little spaceships. Uh, sometimes you might have seen depictions of them. They look like little spaceships with legs sprouting out of them. And so when they land on the bacteria... Yeah. It looks when they like land on you. Yeah, well, they land on the bacteria that might be on me. Yep. Uh, if I'm a bacteria, it would land on me. And it could infect me. And then sometimes what happens is it'll pick up the bacteria's DNA and move it to another bacteria. In that case, if we were bacteria, yeah. it can move my DNA to you. Yeah. And so, so that's a process called transduction. And, and that happens very quickly, what you're telling me. It happens telling. very quickly yeah. and it happens all the time. Yeah. Um, um, what, we, what my lab found mm -hmm. was that there was, a very, um, there was an unknown mechanism of this mm -hmm. in which parasites, smaller, you know, smaller DNA elements that actually parasitize bacteriophages, these are driving an additional mechanism of gene transfer that turns out to be the most powerful yes. and, and most uh, high, highly efficient mechanism of gene transfer that's currently known. So in a in kind of a strange yeah. 
twist of irony, the parasites of parasites are driving the most powerful mechanism of gene transfer. And now that they have been uncovered by you, you've found them out, right? Um, What's next? How do you anticipate that this discovery is going to help doctors and nurses who are treating patients who have these kind of bacterial infections? Um, well, th there's, there's a lot you can do with this information. And I think um, what I think we should, should, should note is that uh, gene transfer, or at least this mechanism, uh, is basically 1,000 to 10,000 times more efficient than the next most efficient mechanism that was known. So if we put it in context, um, vertical transmission uh, that, that's inheritance, um, we can equate all these different mechanisms to say like the, the, uh, the, the old snail mail delivery, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, where you had mail carriers handing letters by hand, right? Um, if we equate like the older mechanism gene transfer, they might be the equivalent of say like dial-up or something old, old delivery systems mm. of, of information. Uh, this new re recent mechanism of gene transfer is basically the equivalent of broadband, um, high-speed internet. So very quickly, how very quick, study massive information that's cut moving the, through. The thing, links between them. Yes, and, 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 and the amount of gene transfer and information that's moving is very, very fast. So what we can do with this information is we, we, we can understand that bacteria will always adapt, and they adapt very quickly. And I think this, this should drive some policy going forward in that, um, for one, one of the best ways to deal with resistant bacteria, at least in the wards, is to uh, have very, very good uh, hygiene, safe hygiene practices. So improve the protocols um, for hygiene in, in, by nurses and doctors. Um, another, another improvement that you could do is what's very effective in the US is to monitor and swab incoming patients and mm. check for mm. the, the bacteria and microbes mm. that they're carrying and track what they have in real time. Because I think it's important yeah. to point out that there's a lot of pathogens that humans carry that don't uh, cause disease. You know, we're going to have to invite you back because this it sounds like we're just scratching the surface here. So we're <laughs> going to have to bring you back in okay. and, and have another chat. And we sure. do appreciate what you've shared with us so far. Uh, we've been speaking there with Assistant Professor John Chen uh, from the NUS Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine.